Rise and shine, and welcome to Devotions this morning at Mountaintop Ministries with Pastor Ken. I think we're getting him awake. How would you like somebody to stick a camera in your face every morning and tell you to smile and rise and shine? <laughs> Not hard to smile when you're, uh, you know, I feel extremely blessed. I feel really happy to have the opportunity of sharing the gospel with you, many of you out there every day. It's an awesome opportunity. And uh, I want to ask you a question this morning. What do you do while you're suffering, while you're waiting for your miracle to happen? How do you respond? I'd like to know, write it down, text it back to me. You never know, I might end up making a song out of it, but uh, there's a song that I used to sing when I was just a kid. Ken Klinstver asked me the other day if I uh, remember singing a song about Paul. Now, when I was just like uh, 12 years old, uh, my mother and dad bought the first record player, real stereo. Cabinet was about six feet long. <laughs> And uh, anyway, with that came a, a record by Kitty Wells. And one of the songs on there, and it was called, if I remember, Singing on a Sunday was the name of the record. And uh, Kitty was singing uh, uh, Paul's Ministry, a song called Paul's Ministry. And I used to sing that in, in church all the time with a little group called the Ivanhoe Singing Group. And a good many of them are still alive. That's an amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> you better be careful, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pidge. <laughs> so Elsie and Kayler and Dorothy and Wayne Holmes and Ken, those of you that I can remember that are alive, if you're listening to this, Gather around, let's do it together for one more time, for old time's sake. The Lord said, stand up and dry up your tears. You must preach my gospel for many long years. To Damascus, the way that is straight, you meet an yes. There, you must wait. I counted all. On Adam, he was the same. I counted on Judah, but he proved untrue. Oh, go tell the world, I'm counting. Days have gone by, and yet I don't see. But here stands my brother talking with me. He says, Brother Paul, the Lord in the sky. He has sent me to heal you and open your eyes. He said, I'll send you to the Gentiles. I'll send you to Rome. 
But Paul, you must suffer Till I call you home Just wait in the desert You'll be wrecked out at sea But keep right on I'll keep right on preaching my gospel for me. And that's a good old song, I want to tell you. I like that song, brings back memories. Let me read to you what Paul said when he was being persecuted and he was suffering as a result of it, and uh, in jail. Yea, doubtless, that means beyond a shadow of a doubt, I count everything as a loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord. He's saying just to get to know Jesus Christ has been the highlight of my life. There's not another thing in the world that can even match it. And, and Paul has just gone into great detail and, and given his resume of his life and all of his achievements, achievements. And he said, there's nothing can match the joy of knowing and learning about Jesus Christ, my Lord. For whom I have suffered for and have suffered the loss of all things. When it seems like all your things are evaporating or they're disappearing, maybe even your health. He said, I've suffered the loss of all things. Here's his attitude. I count them all but dross or dumb that I may win Jesus Christ. Now he's not saying you gotta suffer in order to win Jesus Christ. But he's saying, if they're gonna put me through all this, and they're going to persecute me, then I'm going to show them what Jesus Christ would do, how Jesus Christ would act. I'm going to show them the attitude of Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep on loving and forgiving and being thankful. That's what he's really saying. That's a real ministry to me. You too, okay? And I'm going to be found in him not having my own righteousness, that means, he says, people are going to look at me and they're, going to, they're not going to say, oh, Paul was a great guy. They're not going to be able to say that. It's nothing to do with us. Except, you know, the Lord uses us. I often say, uh, if you got the will, he's got the power. It takes the both of them, God's power and my will, to get something done. that I might be found in him having my, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Paul is really saying, I trust him. That's what faith is all about. It's trusting God when you're hurting. That's what faith is all about, folks. Trusting God when you're lying in the hospital. Trusting in God when you're getting a chemotherapy this morning in the hospital, trusting God when you're standing at a graveside, trusting God when you're lying beside your partner and they're passing, trusting God. You say, oh, it hurts. Well, there, there's something way beyond this. Paul said, everything that I have lost has been taken away from me. He said, there's something far bigger in God's plan that really is, okay? That's what he's really saying. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Oh, man, you know, I, I've, I've met a lot of people. I, I, I get to know people easily. I love to meet people. And for every one of you that are out there on Facebook and YouTube, you know, sometimes it's over 500, sometimes it's 200. 
And if it were only one, it'd be special to me. There's a few of you that say, Pastor Ken, I don't know how I'd make it if it weren't for morning devotions. I start my day. If it were only you, I'd keep on doing it. Because the 90 and 9 were in the fold, but the lost lamb was the one that Jesus went looking for. And let me just pause and say, if you're feeling hurt or insignificant or lost, Jesus loves you and so do I. And I pray that I can encourage you and help you. Okay? But I want to get to know you too. So when I'm saying that I might know him, I do know him. But I want to help you know him. And I'd like to get to know you. That's why I keep asking you to type in and at least tell me your name. And tell me if this ministry means anything special to you. And what's it doing for you during hard times. Please don't get lazy doing that. Uh, I count on that. It's not an ego thing. It, it's like preaching to a congregation and there's nobody out there. I've didn't done that a few times during this virus. I, I want to hear from you. I want to see you. I want to know how it's helping you. Okay? Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Uh, Paul's saying, though I'm hurting right now, there's going to be a resurrection. He says, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up. I may, I may be down right now, but I'm going to get up. And failure is never final unless you decide to stay down. As long as you decide to get up one more time, you've had a resurrection. Amen? And I remember when I used to wrestle at Center Hastings Secondary School in Maida. And, uh, you know, boy, the coach would get on us. Don't you dare lay there on that mat. If, you, if, you, if you've been defeated, you better get yourself up there and up in a hurry. And one time a preacher, I heard him preaching, he said, he said, I'm always up, I'm never down. I'm either up or getting up all the time. Mm, did you get that? I'm either up or getting up all the time. Paul said that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. I might have blew it yesterday, but today I'm gonna make it. There's gonna be a resurrection. That I might have fellowship in his sufferings that I might understand why he really died. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not one of those preachers that believe that God causes you to get sick. <laughs> no, no. I believe God could use anything, even your sickness, and get honor and glory. But I don't believe God causes his children to get sick. It's contradictory to the word God is a healer through Jesus Christ. By his stripes, you are healed. But do you know what I really discovered? What really needs to be healed is the heart and the mind and the attitude. And you can't read that this morning without realizing Paul was hurting on the outside, but he'd had a resurrection on the inside. And so I'd like to know about the good, bad, and the ugly in your life while you're hurting. The good, bad, and the ugly. Go ahead, let's talk. Get on Facebook there and come on back to me. Give me a message and I'll pray with you because I love you. Pastor Ken signing off. You have a resurrection day, okay? In Jesus' name, bye-bye.